there's a few things I haven't shared my thoughts with you guys. So that's what today we're going to do. That star from Timmet's new setting spray is called Light Mist Setting Spray. And there are two types of sprays. One is more towards normal to dry skin and mine is 03 which is more suitable for oily skin. After using nearly two weeks I do feel this one extend my makeup. I use this in two ways. One is to use it for makeup so I use it as a primer as well as a finishing setting spray. From that perspective my makeup like today even with this heavy makeup on in the hot weather it can make my makeup kind of like very long lasting, eight to 10 hours without any wear breaking, especially if you wear masks, right? After you spray with this, it's pretty much like sealed everything, blocked everything on. And then when you wear masks, there is no makeup surrounding this area. There is nothing coming off. This one does contribute to my oil control. So if I don't spray this, use a good, uh, oil control powder like Floris's one, even after four or five hours, my T zone and surround my nose will have a still slightly little bit of face oil. This one pretty much can add additional an hour on top of that. Secondly, I use it as part of my morning routine now. As you guys probably heard from my last the Floris's video that I use the Floris's new setting powder as the last step of my morning routine. So after some blocks, I will pile up thin layer of the powder and then I will spray this one on top. With this, and the Floris's powder combined together, it really helps my oil control throughout the day. Uh, you know, you guys probably know that I'm starting the whole driving license, these things in China again. So in China, you have to clock in and clock out on your practice time. Uh, during the day, currently in China, it's about 33 to 35 degrees. Well, in Changsha at least. So it's quite sweating as the uh, practicing car isn't that high tech. The air calm is very... So I pretty much sweat it quite a bit. But while I use this one as well as the powder together, my face remained so well. Although I still sweat, but I just touching up with normal tissue, then my face looks so clean and fresh. It doesn't like before makes it so oily. It's like your pores just screaming out and your face oil just can't wait to get out like that. But after using this, it really helps my oil control throughout the day. And also I really, really like the head. Here is darker, yeah, you can see. Can you see? It's very fine mist, but it is visible and effective. I don't like certain mist that too soft to actually feel anything. Come on guys, we normally close our eyes to do this spray. When you can't feel where the spray goes, you pretty much kind of like, like, oh, do I need to hold my face and try to catch all the sprays? Uh, so I like a little bit of pressure, but it needs to be evenly spread out. This one tick both boxes. So as soon as your spray, you can, you can straight away feel where the mist come from. Then you can maneuver it and you know where it's kind of dusted on your face. And once it's locked on your face, it's locked. And another thing I like this spray is it doesn't change the texture of your makeup. So especially, you know, for oily or combined oily skin, we like a soft matte finish. Some spray, once you spray it, it kind of add a little bit of glow or dewiness on your makeup. This one doesn't change your makeup once it's dried. So if you're looking for some mist, I highly recommend to search Timid. I actually Googled the Timid the other day. I do find that there are a couple of websites actually selling authentic, okay, I always check authentic source for you guys, uh, authentic Timage products. So do Google it to find out. I think there were only two or three websites selling it. So highly recommend for you to check out. The other one is a contour. Look at the packaging first. How luxury and pretty. This is a similar like, uh, you know, florist's type of design is like, very much 
adding the Chinese culture, especially the, like Forbidden City, that type of structure, taste, and the culture melt into a some makeup design. Uh, this palette is called Palace Identity. I think you guys probably seeing a lot of adverts going on on Facebook as well as Instagram. Out of interest, I just bought one item to start with. Yeah, oh, I am sorry. <laughs> it couldn't be, yeah, yeah, it's just not my luck with this brand. Although it's just the first item, but I was quite disappointed. So this is a contour palette. So when I see the two combo together, we're like, oh great, they have a little bit, you know, slightly like tan color base and slightly gray. When you mix together, it would give you a perfect balance. Okay, let me prove this. I'm going to scroll heavily five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let me do the swatches. Can you see anything? I know I do like natural contour, but there needs to be some color, no? The pigment, it's... Oh, the pigment is too low to use. Even I try to use this to contour my nose. It... A, it's like you have to pile up like 10, 15 times to actually get a little bit of the shadow color actually showing. Yeah. Ah, no. The powder, it is not bad. The powder quality, despite the colors perspective, the powder, it is very fine. It doesn't cake it up. It is soft, creamy enough for actually to use on the skin. But... When it's something like this, you can't actually see, so it's kind of a pointless, isn't it? Pointless. So, you guys, when you see the advert, think twice. Think twice. Next one is from Kiko. You guys are probably more familiar with this cover, right? Uh, this appeared in a lot of my videos as well. This is their translucent pressed powder, which is a like a dupe of NARS translucent powder two of them are very much identical they are a transparent translucent powder which means it doesn't add in too much powder color on your face it's pretty much like a see-through seal on your makeup and nars this one is well known in the market and the kiko this one called the invisible touch is being very hyper and myself tested it out the texture the finish it is 99 percent like NARS's one. The only difference is this one doesn't last as long as NARS. This one, it is more suitable for dry skin. And also the reflections perspective, um, Kiko's this one in this cover, it is actually slightly, slightly higher, not glow, like skin reflection than the NARS one. So overall, I think the overall feedback, especially in Chinese market, the Kiko's one is actually for dry skin is slightly higher than the NARS. Myself, absolutely adore this one, but this one doesn't last long on my face. Only in about a couple of hours, my face will come in to meet with everyone until I bought a new Kiko's pressed powder. It's now called a Blooming Perfecting Powder. The texture, oh, 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 hang on, let's give applause to Kiko's packaging this time. It is so pretty. It's like a lotus flower. And then when you open, beautiful covering in there. And the powder, it is so smooth absolutely smooth and the powder it is so fine the texture three of them identical absolutely identical and when you do these swatches two of them seems exactly the same it is very fine still transparent and very very silky 
uh, today I used the, this Kiko one and you will see that I will insert the clip that this powder is very much safe than my foundation. So today, unfortunately, I used a new foundation that again caked up on me and it's very sticky and the pores just doesn't help to minimize the pores at all. So I just used the, this powder on top of the already a little bit of caked up foundation and you can tell straight away it's like added a softer filter. It's like blurred out so many, you know, underneath the cakeness and also the big pores and the unnecessary glow in a way <laughs> that's from the foundation itself. It made my skin look so smooth and silky and it just when you touch the surface as well, you feel so nice. And I tested out this new version. I don't know whether it changed from this or not, but at least this one lasts way much longer than this one on my face. This one can last about four hours, just less than four hours before my face oil coming out. This one compared with the Floris's one and the NARS one, well, the new Floris's uh, setting powder is similar like NARS. Have you not seen that video? Check out this one. And the Kiko's one compared with Floris's one, two of them are very similar. However, Floris's is slightly last longer, like half an hour to an hour longer than the Kiko one. So I would say, especially in the winter time, Kiko, this new one is a different name now, but I still feel the quality wise, the powder itself is identical as previous one but they definitely add something in there so if you are combining the oily skin and you like NARS this type of finish go for Kiko Kiko is way much cheaper and the result is delicious absolutely delicious then let's talk about this full face palette the full name is called VNA Lancia Lancia I don't have the cover anymore. So uh, yeah, that's basically the full face palette. Uh, the packaging is um, it's a little bit bulky for my liking, but the, uh, the design, the picture on top of it, is, it gives you a very high quality finish. Don't get me wrong. It just uh, myself don't like this too bulky packaging. And what does look like inside is when you open the lid, you will see two blush and two highlight. And you, he you see here is like a little pulling stream. You pull out, there are eye shadows. Uh, you can see the color right away, right? Today I use this four colors. Uh, let's talk about the eyeshadows first. From the powder's quality's perspective, it is actually quite good. And I do like all the shimmer colors in this palette. It is so pretty. Uh, although it is not that, how to say, daily friendly. But uh, if you like a colored eyeshadows, they, uh, this one is a good choice. Those are shimmer colors. It is really fine. Although it looks a little bit scary from the palette, right? When you actually touch it on the skin, it is actually more subtle, which is more friendly to actually use on the eyelid. I especially like this too. Very pretty. Let me also swatch a couple of darker colors as well. The powder quality is really good and the pigment of this palette, it is medium to high pigment. So you do need to light hand it and look at the performance of the darker color. It is very smooth. There is no cakeness in there. And today for the eye look today, I just used this four colors. I start from the lightest color just to cover the entire eyelid, the eye socket, and then dip into this slightly darker color, but it has a little bit beautiful sheen in there. Then to add this color, start from the out corner towards the lash line, move up and move inwards a little bit. The area will be more focused in the out corner and then use the same color just to add a little bit for the inner corner as well as the bottom of the eye towards the out corner and then use the darkest color it is like more 
brown burgundy little bit of plum colors in there then define the outer corner even further then i topped up with the shimmer color just in the middle of the eyes and I have to say, you know, the overall eye look, it is actually very, very pretty. The only thing I, for this palette is, I'm a little bit concerned com is because it's not so daily wearable in a way. Uh, although when you light handed, when you look at the my look, I look today, you don't feel it's like overwhelming. It's because I use this for, and have a look at this one. It's like, you know, traffic lights, right? So, um... Apart from this and this, this is actually not too bad. If you really like like lavender purpley eye look, this is not too bad. But this too is, for me, it's probably a little bit too colorful. But if you like colored eye look, this full face palette is um, is a good consideration. Let's put it that way. And then today's blush on the face. I really like these two colors over here. They are absolutely on my sweet spot. The powder itself is very similar like the eyeshadow. It is very creamy and fine. It doesn't look dusty on your face. You see, it's melt on your top of your skin so well. And these are the two highlighter today. I actually used this one because originally I thought this, the base color going to be too pink and purpley. But when you look at it, you can see there is a base color in there, but with the whole makeup, like when you in the same color zone, the base colored highlighter, it is like melt in well better than I thought. So those four are actually very nice and daily usable and more practical compared to the eyeshadow palette. So, um, but the packaging is still a little bit bulky. It's like hold a book. You only really use this at home. You don't really travel with it because there is no contour color in there per se. So you can't really just carry one and sort out the entire face. So last one is Into You, this liquid lipstick. Into You liquid lipstick recently has been very hyper in the Chinese market in particular. I cannot avoid of seeing their adverts. Then I bought two kind of popular colors. I do, but I do not <laughs> like them. Let me explain. Uh, first of all, the packaging, it is very, very nice. It is kind of like small, little, which is really good, easy for traveling as well as good for finishing as well. Uh, if it's like full long size, you rarely finish them. The color I got is EM17 and EM01. The formulation, let's talk about. The formulation, it is exactly like lip mud. It is very muddy, creamy, very easy to spread out on the on the lip. It doesn't sink into the lip lines, it's spread out very evenly. It does not emphasize your lip lines, which is very good. The overall performance and experience of using the lip mud, liquid lipstick, it is actually very nice. In terms of long lasting, it is, it is a bit average, let's put it that way. And I, the bit I don't really like is the color. I like one, but not overly sure about the other. So this one is uh, uh, EM01 and this is EM17. Yeah. Can you tell which one I like and which I don't? I like this one, not really about this one. Although today I used this one as a like light base, when you use just a thin layer, it is not bad. It's more towards like a paddle nude. You see when I spread it out, it reduced the illuminate paddle color in here and become a more like a nude paddle. So I use this as a base, then I added this color in the middle of my lip and then I just dotted a lip oil on top. I just make my lip a little bit plumped. Um, but this color, when I apply full layer on, it looks very luminous pink. It, it, it just doesn't look, how to say, it doesn't make me look ugly, but it doesn't make me look elegant or classic or high class. 
in a way. It just feel like you apply like a kid's lipstick on. That's how you feel. But on the other hand, this is actually a nice color. You can either apply just a thin layer or a thick layer. When you apply thick layer, it is a very energetic tomato orange color. And this one has a good amount of brown there. Therefore, it makes the color looks, how to say, looks more, a little bit more stylish, this one. But the quality, I have to say, uh, with Into You, this brand's uh, price line, uh, I give absolutely a thumb up. They always, they often, not always, they often on sale. I think I bought this about 48 yen. So it's about five, six quid for this quality. I mean, quality itself, you have to choose your preferred color, obviously. For the quality itself, I think it is definitely worth like 10 pounds or over. It is a very good quality. So if you guys are interested in lip mud, liquid lipstick, you can certainly check out this as it is also cheap enough. Therefore, you can actually buy more color selection in it for, for you to use on different days, different locations. Hope you like and enjoy today's video. If you do, do click the like button and most importantly to subscribe my channel. I will see you on my next one.